Today we're going to rewind the copper coils of a Happy Model 0802 brushless motor and return it to its former glory. Let's get started. For this project you will require the following tools, a soldering iron, some flux, tweezers, pliers, helping hands, and some good eyesight or reading glasses. When the C-clamps are removed, be careful not to lose the plastic and brass washers tucked under the clamp. Place the small parts in a small plastic bag and put them aside. Now you can easily separate the motor by pulling on the bell. These small scale motors have a small piece of insulation wrapped around a solder joint. This means that the ends of all three wires are connected together to complete the circuit. The connection for the solder joint is tucked under the stator. I found this to be the best place to start when unwrapping the copper wire. Remove the insulation and with a pair of wire snips cut the solder joint where the wires meet. This will separate the wires from one another allowing us to unwind each wire individually. For the Happy Model 0802 19,000 kV motors, I found that each coil is wound nine times with two millimeter copper enameled wire. If you want to increase or decrease the motor kV, you can add or subtract coil turns. Less turns means higher kV, and more turns means the opposite. Now that the disassembly is complete, let's clean off some of the gunk and crud that is collected during flight. For this step, you'll need an old toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. Dip or spray a liberal amount onto each component and scrub the grime away with your toothbrush. After cleaning, allow the rest of the IPA to evaporate. We can see that the copper enamel wire is two millimeters thick. Remember, if you are rewinding different motor types, make sure to make your own measurements and get the correct copper, copper enameled wire. Winding these motors is straightforward. Each coil requires nine turns. Make sure to leave approximately five to six centimeters of extra wire at the end. Wind the first coil, then skip two coils and wind the next. For each wire, you will need to wind three coils in total. Repeat this process for the other two wires. When you're finished, the stator should look something like this. When we unwound the wires, we cut off the solder joint that joined all the wires together. Now we will reverse this process and solder the three wires back together. Twist the group of coil wires together and cut off the excess, leaving approximately half a centimeter. Before soldering, add some flux and solder them together with a solid solder joint. The heat of the solder should remove the enameled insulation at the joint. You can also use a small piece of sandpaper or the edge of a small knife to remove some of the insulation at the tips of each wire.
The opposite ends of the coil wires need to be connected to silicone insulated motor wires. Cut three wires approximately six centimeters apiece. Separate the motor wires and solder them securely to the silicone coated wire. Now let's make a makeshift silicone pallet out of paper. Cut out a small piece of paper, place it on your workbench, and add a small dab of silicone. Next, we will coat the exposed solder joints with silicone and slide heat shrink tubing over them. Apply some heat with a hot air gun or lighter to shrink the tubing. With a toothpick, coat the solder joint with the silicone. Slide a small piece of heat shrink tubing over the joint and tuck it under the stator. Be careful not to get silicone everywhere. It is a pain to clean up. These wires and solder joints are fragile. In order to make them more robust and shock resistant, coat all three of the wires covering the solder joints with a thick blob of silicone and slide another large piece of heat shrink tubing over them. Apply heat once again. For a final touch, we will add an additional blob of silicone to attach the motor wires to the stator, thereby making the joint a little more robust. As a last step, let the silicone dry. Attaching the motor back to the bell is the reverse process of how we took them apart. After replacing the plastic and brass washers, replace the C-clamp with the open end facing the motor shaft. With a small pair of pliers, add a little pressure to snap the clamp back into place. Now you should be good to go and your motor should hopefully work as well as the day you bought it. Sure, it is easier to simply order new motors and throw the old ones away. However, with the price of motors skyrocketing in the last years, you can save a little money. If money is not the issue, reminding your motors is useful to better understand how brushless motors work. For a more technical and detailed explanation of this video, check out my blog at nuxnick.com. The link is in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching and make sure to subscribe. We'll see you next time.